Oh my goodness, before I jump into the conversation, I just have to say thank you for your patience. And I was also sharing with Coach Gemma, who's here, that if we're going to have tech difficulties, there's no one else I'd feel more comfortable <laughs> having them with than Gemma, because she truly is the person that calms me down. <laughs> so with all that to say, welcome. Today we are talking about what do small steps really look like? I know a lot of us have health goals and it can get very overwhelming when we're trying to, you know, lose 10 pounds in two weeks. Hmm. If you know me, you know, hmm. we don't do that in any of my programs. We're doing small steps to get us to where we want to go. So with that said, I have Coach Gemma Wilkinson with us in my kitchen. <laughs> you are welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I am truly truly grateful to have you here in my home but also here with my community because as i said she calms me down so y'all just wait <laughs> wait till you get some of these nuggets from this powerhouse of a woman <laughs> and of a coach Thank you. so you are welcome and as you can see we have a few things set up so you gotta stick with us to the end to see what this is all about we've got some fun surprises and just a little bit of housekeeping just so you know i'm following along with comments on my iPad down here. So if you see me looking down, just know you still have my attention. You still have Coach Gemma's attention. I just want to make sure that if there are any questions or comments that we can address them. So with that said, you might be wondering, how do I know this powerhouse? Hmm. It's, <laughs> been, a, it's, it's been a while. It's right? been a long time. I know. As I was getting ready this morning and brushing my teeth, I'm like, I've known her since my first marriage, which has been a lot of years, but present day, you have a better memory than I do. How long has it been? Do you remember? Oh, that's not saying much, friend. <laughs> um, I, well. I think it's, um, I would say more than 12 years. Okay. Well, then there you have it. That would make sense. 10, 11. Um, yeah, it would maybe 10, be, maybe 10, 11. Something yeah. like that. So more than 10. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, we were both working in corporate mm -hmm. and it's just such a blessing that we both are now running our own biz. And that's actually another reason why I wanted Gemma to come share some of her gems with us because you actually stepped out first. Mm -hmm. And tell us the name of your company, which I think says it all. The name of my coaching business is a different choice. And there you go. <laughs> so... Gemma was one of those angels who was willing to say, yes, I'm ready. I, I've had enough. And actually, I want to hear a little bit more about her testimony. And I want to share it with you all. So I won't tell all the goodies, but I will say witnessing Gemma's process and seeing that it is possible to have life after corporate America. Life like, after corporate, <laughs> right. It's just truly a blessing and no shade on corporate. I love my corporate friends. I'm so grateful for my corporate journey. And I will say, having my own company is just, it's a sweet spot for me right now. So, Same. with that said, I know part of your journey around health actually kind of trickles back to your corporate story. Will you share a little bit with us? Like, how did you know it was time to leave that lifestyle and come over to your own? Great question. Thank you for asking. Um, it was about... Um, eight years ago or maybe nine years ago what's the coincidence that as you and i know each other i started kind of ignoring the signs ignoring the little the, the signs of uh there's something up there's something going on Why you aren't physically you, you um it was physically it was it was a it was on a deeper level it was a deeper knowing there was something within me was telling me to pay attention to what i was doing okay. and i was so used to the everyday what it was supposed to be um, I didn't listen to her. I didn't pay attention to her curiosity and I kept going and I railroaded her. I just steamrolled right over her. And, and when you say her, just so that my community yes. is clear, are you talking about your inner voice, your inner yes. knowing, or inner are you wisdom, talking about... Exactly. Okay. Inner okay. wisdom, inner knowing. Um, okay. When something inside tells you to stop or to slow down or to listen or that something's off. I wasn't ready to listen mm. and um, shortly after that um, I was diagnosed with breast cancer mm. and after I checked the box of cancer 
very much not wanting to partic actively participate in it. I wanted to get through it and go back to what I knew, what I was comfortable with. You're like, okay, we've got cancer, done, did Check the whole the trauma, now back to my busy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Okay, Abs interesting. Absolutely. And it took me two years, two years to slow down, listen, pay attention, and start getting curious. And when I did, I decided that um, the message that my inner wisdom was trying to tell me for, at that point, almost four years, um, I decided to listen to her. And I decided to say thank you to my corporate opportunity um, and step out and figure it out. No safety net, but to step out because I was worth doing that for myself mm. instead of hanging on and figuring it out while I was in the middle of the chaos. Yes, you were so worth it. And and I'm so glad you listened to her and, and that it's inner been six voice. Six years. Seriously, six years in January. Oh, it doesn't mm -hmm. like it's been that long. Yeah, but wow. Okay, and then in this time that I've known you, I've kind of been peeking, like with a curiosity about your veganism, mm -hmm. and you've been really good at sharing some insights with me. But I never truly asked you, like, how did that start? Like, was it the same time with the cancer diagnosis? Had you always have you always been a vegan? Great that question. Um, I've never had red meat my entire life. Um, that's how oh, my that. that's how my mom and dad raised me, and that always stuck. Okay. Um, and then maybe fifteen. We're going to get called on our math at the end of this, <laughs> right? <but like> fifteen <laughs> years ago. Fifteen. Well, we were ish, chatting at lunch. Yes. Fifteen <laughs> year uh, years ago, um, I stopped eating anything with a face, as I put it. So oh, no, no chicken, no turkey, no eggs. Um, and then about six years ago, a very close friend of mine who was plant-based, who may be watching this, she knows, I love you, um, same name as this one, actually, and, um, <laughs> nice name. yeah, nice name, nice <laughs> job, um, she started educating me, gently, she mm. started introducing, um, different choices to eating. And then about um, six years, six years ago, um, when my biological father passed away and I was in South Florida, um, I started having a symptom within my body. Mm -hmm. And because the family that I was so blessed to be staying with um, knew my coping mechanism at the time, going through the death and the transition of my dad, um, was cheese and wine. Oh, interesting. So interesting. I thought that what I was experiencing in my body might have been due to my heavy, heavy weight that I was putting on <laughs> Freudian to, to the um, importance that I was putting on wine and cheese in my coping of my loss, the anticipatory grief and the post grief. Um, when my dad passed and I came back to Colorado, um, I was, I remember saying to a very, another very close friend of mine, um, I think I'm going to try the plants. No? I think I'm going to try vegan. <laughs> and, um, okay. and she was knowing my love for cheese. Um, she gently cheered me on and eventually that rolled into, um, leaning into plant-based cooking, mm. which I was very new to cooking at all and mm. overall, and let alone just plants, no cheese, no leaning on the things that I knew could give me comfort. Mm -hmm. And it's been five, almost five years of vegan cooking, wow. choosing plants. And wow. also the part, I guess, that I left out is the, um, when I came back after my dad passed, so in 2017, during a regular cancer screening, my cancer had metastasized oh. to my right lung. So that inner oh, knowing so that cool. part of what was happening in my body was, um, a signal that I'm glad I paid closer attention to when I did because I learned from the mis the mistake of years before um, and that was lung cancer so what I was experiencing physically mm -hmm. was lung cancer and, and a very hard 2017 and or excuse me it was breast cancer that metastasized to my lung so the breast cancer happened first and then a few mm -hmm. years later it was the lung cancer three years <gasps> three years later it had Story. It oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, Gemma. Okay, and so then, because I know there's quite a few people in my community who 
what is even the proper terminology? Not, is it deal with cancer? Have had experience? Have had experiences with mm-hmm. cancer? Mm-hmm. So how did you make that connection um, to cancer and diet? Because I know that it's not widely talked about in the medical mm-hmm. community, what I have heard. And so how did you make that connection? How did that's a, such a great question? Patients willing to be curious, mm-hmm. willingness to connect some dots, it willing to try. I love it. I, I didn't know what that symptom was that I was experiencing in my body until the cardiothoracic surgeon went in for lung surgery and took it out and biopsied mm-hmm. it. Um, and I uh, came back, you know, that afternoon and I was high as a kite. And I remember him telling me, um, I've been doing this for a long time, and, and, I'm, uh, and I'm pretty sure it's cancer. We have, still have to run pathology, but I'm pretty sure uh, it's cancer. I can't even imagine being in the chair, in the office, getting that Hospital, news. yeah, for two days. Oh, yeah, a few days. And, um, and it was, the, it, I, for me, it was the best ex- happenstance, the best kind of, wait, it's what? And so when I started um, truly practicing eliminating dairy and eventually eliminating alcohol, um, it was massively life-changing. And mm-hmm. the fact that my oncologist, I'm eight years into my cancer experience, and my oncologist will look at me and say, I don't know what to do with you because people who experience metastasis are normally, they don't catch it, mm-hmm. they're far beyond, and there's really not much we can do. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Keep doing it. it, yes! That is the diet, that is the commitment. That is the commitment to love yourself, to show up for yourself. Oh, and also to try the, try the ish that you're unfamiliar with. Mm. Well, that leads me into our topic today, which is what do small steps really look like? And I can just share, um, before I ask you more in depth, mm. that this coach right here, I think it was either a text, maybe it was a Zoom call that we were on, and she's like, I came home, busy day, starving, instead of grabbing from my normal comfort food, she went and she made this like gorgeous vegetarian feast. It was like five different vegetables and I think a healthy grain in there and of course the healthy fats and I'm like, you go on with your bad self. So Gemma Testimonial that we are to... listening. <laughs> We hear you. I love it when I have students who listen. <laughs> and then, of course, it pays off, which I cannot take responsibility or credit for any of the hard work you've done just Thank to you. change your lifestyle and change that um, trajectory. Thank you. Yeah, the trajectory. Absolutely. So, bravo. So, Thank then you. other people who are in my community, whether you're um, experiencing bouts with cancer or high blood pressure or diabetes. I know we have a handful in our community um, experiencing diabetes. I know that that can feel very overwhelming. I know that when I got my um, gluten intolerance diagnosis in the beginning, I was like, I don't care. It's not fair that everybody else gets to eat this food and I don't. So it took me, I will admit, a few months before I'm like, okay, stop it. You feel like crap, you want to get pregnant, you want to sleep better. And so I finally came around and now, I mean, 25 years later, it's not even a thought. Like, I just, I don't touch the stuff. So it takes time. So all that to say, we are coming to you to share what do small steps look like so that, you know, next year this time, five years this time, 20 years from now, you can be like, oh yeah, I, this is easy because I've made these small steps along the way. So for you, would you be willing to share, like, especially when you decided, okay, plant-based, that's it, taking care of me, like, can you give us an example of maybe a small step that you chose? So something that's coming up that I really want to say is that it wasn't a light switch moment for me. Okay. It wasn't, and as of Tuesday, Mm -hmm. I'm vegan. (laughs) It it didn't (laughs) Didn't work that way. It didn't work that way. (laughs) Um, I showed up with grace and kindness for myself and also leaned on my close friends who there was no there was no pressure there was no stress good um 
Good. My friend um, and confidant Michelle was just um, alternatives, all about the alternatives, all about the be kind and gentle with yourself. Mm -hmm. I um, love that. So yeah. that if be kind first. Exactly. So if the craving for fill in the blank is more than you're able to counter in that moment, it's okay. You get to try again the next hour, the next day, the next week. You get to pick up and try again. And that's what I like to share in my group coaching, which by the way, if you haven't heard yet, I am back again for Healthy Sexy May. So head to michellefox.com forward slash group coaching if you want to join us. Doors close tomorrow, actually. So sign up soon. With that said, I like to talk about small steps for long-term results around food. Mm -hmm. However, in your sessions as a coach, you're talking about like lifestyle changes mm -hmm. pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. um, so do you have maybe any tips or tools for us? I'm trying to think of an example of maybe one of my more resistant students. Mm -hmm. um, could, okay. it, could it even be no? Oh, I love that. So instead of saying no dairy, maybe you just start with, I'm going to have almond milk now instead of my dairy milk. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Which, you know, hint, hint, that's what we're about to make. <laughs> um, so yeah, so small step could be with the milk. Um, what about, I'm trying to think of some of the complaints I get. What about, um, I really like alcohol. Mm. My girlfriends and I are going out tomorrow night. Mm. I'm going to drink. Mm. How would you respond to that? I can tell you how I responded to that. <laughs> After I'm done making a bunch of internal noises that are like, I hear you. Right. Because um, I want to drink sometimes too. Yeah. I um I have only been alcohol free of alcohol. Um, I think I'm on month ten. Okay. Nice. Um, so it's been a very slow journey for me. Okay. Um, one of the things, one of the tools, one of the small steps for me, <laughs> um, figuring out a refreshing beverage that I could have at the end of the day, so that I could start with a mindset switch of. Oh, well, it's five o'clock somewhere right here or wherever. It doesn't matter. It's time for me to have something that's going to support my wind down routine. Mm, I love that. So maybe uh, the, the physical habits there. Can and like, but also like the something to look forward to. The oh, something to give yes. myself. The, oh, I'm stressed and I need to soothe her. It's kind of like a treat. Like mm -hmm. I'm still treating myself mm -hmm. and this is what the treat looks like today. Mm -hmm. And, and then. And yeah, and, and that's exactly what it was, was the, it was an old family friend uh, introduced, I saw her make it years ago, mm -hmm. seltzer water, a uh, splash of cranberry juice, Yum. and um, a slice and squeeze of fresh lime juice, fresh lime. I love it. And that's it's actually summery serious, and re right, it's summery and refreshing and, and get light. The in there. And it checks a lot of boxes. And the vitamin C from the cranberry. There it is. I think that's an excellent mm -hmm. suggestion. <laughs> Yay! Well, I just looked down and saw all these gorgeous jars. You all know how I feel about glass jars. Gemma brought these into the kitchen. Aren't these gorgeous? Um, what are we doing with these glass jars today? So since we're talking about small steps mm -hmm. today, <laughs> this is where we're starting. We're yes. starting with almond milk. And Love it. for me, um, my mom raised me on skim milk my entire oh. life. Oh, so um, I was very familiar with um, the consistency of a watered down, which felt like a watered down milk. Uh -huh. um, and in my process of stepping away from dairy, that was something that I had to let go of. I transitioned to almond milk in a container um, for a while mm -hmm. before finally a close friend, Ashley, sent me a recipe for almond milk. And I, I was love like, it. what do you mean you can make your own? You can make your own almond milk? Didn't even, didn't, <laughs> not how my brain worked at the time. You're like, what? Mm -hmm. how, what? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, oh, and I think I've been making my own almond milk for almost five years. Nice. And it's in my coffee. It's what I use in my recipes. It's, um, 
pro tip, if you decide to sweeten your almond milk, don't use it in mac and cheese. I've done that. It's not going to turn out well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little it's, chunky, it's, cuddly it's, consistency. It, it also <laughs> like dates or sugar in almond milk. Yeah, not a good idea. No. Yeah. Okay. So you make it plain and then you add to it what you want to make it your own. So that's Love where we're going to start. Love that. You ready? Okay. I am so ready. So when, before I got here, um, I filled two glass containers. I have a little mark and I'm not sure just in the container that indicates where I put my almonds in up to put in some filtered water, cover the lid water as my nephew is going to call out. Oh, she's from New Jersey. Totally. Water. <laughs> I um, love it. Put it in the fridge overnight. Next day, um, rinse them. So drain, rinse. We've pre-done that. And then you take a high powered, high speed blender, five and a half to six cups of water. You dump them right in, go for it. Okay, sweet, making my own almond milk. And for those of you who were with us last year, you my sister it. and I made this. You can catch me on YouTube. Just look for Michelle Fox Love and you'll see my beautiful sister and I making this. But it's so fun to be in like the passenger seat watching somebody else make this. This is of course part of my heart. I'm loving this. Okay. So this is, you're literally almost half done. So you're going to throw this onto your blender, but we did pre-blend. So you want to blend your mixture. So your water and your soaked almonds for about three minutes. You'll know when it's, when it's done and also don't walk away from your blender because that could be a disaster. Um, <laughs> Especially if um, you don't have a high powered blender. I was yes. going to say, you definitely want to for sure soak your almonds. When you have a Vitamix and you're fancy like this, which I hope it's a worthy investment. I mm -hmm. hope you do get fancy like this if you're not already there. Um, you don't always have to soak them, but it's very helpful when you do. Because you Absolutely. get more of the protein out of the almond. Absolutely. So three minutes, we're just going to turn this on here real quick. Make sure your lid is secure. So you've got your blended milk. This is a very fine consistency of a, a mesh consistency. It's known as a nut bag. Seriously, for all of my really vulgar people, yeah, <laughs> I said it. So you and take the, go ahead. the nut bags you can find um, really easily on Amazon.com. Not expensive at all. I think I found mine at Sprouts. Do you remember where you got yours? From? Amazon, three oh. or four dollars. I mean, there and it's go. the same one from when I started four years ago. Bam. Okay. So you take this. Do you want to pour? Sure. Or I can hold. It's easier. Here, why don't I hold the bag? You pour. Okay. And I, I promise you to. can absolutely do this one okay. person. So you're over Ooh. a glass oh. bowl. Bring me this news. That is gorgeous. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. And this fine mesh bag is going to strain out all of your almond pulp. Mm-hmm. And you can maybe that's that's good because what we're gonna do is tighten your string. This is the moment that when you know you are going to be making almond milk later in the week, you almost keep a note in your phone of all of the moments and all of the aggressions that you want to get out. <laughs> I love it. And then you sit, stand here, just squeeze and just <laughs> and you just. All, just get it all out. Ooh, it's so creamy. And so now you've got your creamy almond milk. And just yes. for the sake of your Facebook Live, we will put this to the side. And now that you've got yes. your almond milk, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now that you've got your almond milk already strained mm -hmm. through your mesh bag. So creamy. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That is way better than that dairy stuff. Look at that. It's creamy. It's loaded with protein. Almonds are one of the only whole foods in nature that have my PFF. They've got the protein, they've got mm. the healthy fat, and they've even got the fiber. So a whole food right, right here, here. These almonds. Yeah. So this, taking a page from Michelle's book, and I'm a big fan of reusing glass jars. This, I'm pretty sure, comes from uh, coconut oil. Nice. So washed, rinsed, 
this with a um, just super cool, cute. If you want something a little design with a little screw on that is not reused, TJ Maxx, $2.99, Home Goods, $2.99, $3.99. Sometimes you can find them less on sale. You want to pour in? Oh, actually. Sure. Yeah, I'm going to use the funnel just because, you know, even though we're in the kitchen, Almond I can get is really messy. <laughs> Yes, and you're right. I do not want to waste one single drop. This is so creamy, so gorgeous. And oh there my you go. goodness! And there you have it. I was sharing with Gemma earlier when she mentioned that she might surprise us with this. That I also have an almond cow, which I'm not endorsed by them yet. But for those of us who mm -hmm. are a little bit more strapped on time, it's a food processor that essentially. Uh, blends everything um, on its own and it's really clean and it's really neat and I just looked down and I got a red light so I'm gonna unplug just to make sure okay. that our community can hear us Great. be a little bit different I wonder if that was because I put the jar down I don't know um, I've never seen that before <laughs> and today's like Yay. tech surprise <laughs> I have to check the uh, horoscope and see what's happening in the technology <laughs> field Oh, well, there you have it. Mercury retrograde on its way. Okay, so I was just saying with the um, almond cow, for those of you who need to do things a little bit faster mm -hmm. or you just like toys, mm -hmm. so yeah, just one of those too. Right. Yes. And but can you I use really, the of course, cow prefer into, like single serve. Or do you I guess make... you could. Okay, so you do prepare it. Like I prepare just... it ahead and then I just put it in yeah. a little milk jar. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But I just say that. For those of you who are saying, oh, that looks like too much work, I'm mm -hmm. like, no. We want you to make food from scratch whenever, however possible. So I love, love, love that Gemma's teaching us how to do it from scratch because also this is really easy too. Like you have five to 10 minutes to do this for your health and for your heart and for your brain. And using it so. as part of your meal prep process during the, I mean, I could, granted I'm one person, so one person at home, only I drink the almond milk. Um, this could last me for a week and a half. Love it. Um, and I use it in coffee and if I know I'm going to make a bigger recipe, um, I will make more. And I love to make it in our lemon blueberry cobbler smoothie, mm -hmm. which we have mm -hmm. tucked into the recipes for Healthy Sexy May. Mm -hmm. So just as another, you know, temptation if you are thinking about joining us. There are plenty of delicious uses for almond milk, and I am happy to show you how to use that. So this is fabulous. I think we should taste it. Can we taste it? Yeah, we can. Show? Where okay. can I get some glass drink? Get these? That'd be great. Yeah, let's go fancy. What if we use, um, oh, even more fancy. Yeah, yes. I like it. Speaking of uh, new ways to enjoy non-alcoholic drinks, we can use our wine glasses for our almond milk. Okay. I'll let you get that side and I'll get this side. This is so much fun. I totally <laughs> had the idea of making one of your sweet treat cookie recipes and I just couldn't get my act together. Oh, I love that. That would have been oh, you just been a little fun. busy this week. So yeah. cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Mm. Thank you for watching. Yes. Mmm. It's creamy. It is smooth. That is delicious. Mm -hmm. Coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, well, and so you. that's your that's your non-sweet version that you could also add um dates mm, so cut up some dates good. blend them in to your blend your blend mixture um and as a warning you want to do the dates after you make this not you don't want to pour them in your nut bag because that gets really gooey and gross very i didn't <laughs> so. even know that thank you thank you for that tip yes of course <laughs> and also that's the one time that you would forget that you had made sweetened almond milk when you go for the recipe that you don't want sweetened almond milk well, there you go. So just keep also, it easy. Um, vanilla extract is great. Mm -hmm. That's a nice neutral because it's not going to raise your blood yes. sugar, um, and it just gives it extra flavor. What about coconut sugar? That would be okay too. Mm -hmm. That would be okay too. That would um, give it a little bit more oomph. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I love that kind of golden flavor. And then also, last I was going to say, in the summertime, my bonus son Oliver, he loves strawberry milk. So I'll usually. Mm. Do the almond milk in a blender, like after we've made it, and then I'll do a couple strawberries. I do some monk fruit, 
And it's just like delicious powder. I know. Oh my god, now I'm even thinking like coconut powder. Ooh. Not coconut powder, excuse me, cocoa powder. So like Oh, to make the chocolate milk. milk with with some Maybe fresh that's strawberries. Maybe going to be our lunch today after this uh, okay. podcast is done. Okay. We might be experienced. Okay. Uh, well, then I guess we're going to go now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, Coach Gemma, for being here with me today. This has been so much fun. Thank you, community, for just being so awesome. Where can they find you? Where can people find you? On Instagram, Gemma Wilkinson CPC. Love it. And then, of course, we are going to be back this evening at 6.30 for the Masterclass. What's the deal with gluten? I'm going to be sharing some of my tips to help you heal your belly bloat, eliminate the night sweats, brain fog and other hormonal imbalances. So if you're interested, go to michellefox.com forward slash masterclass and we'll see you this evening. All right, anything else before we sign off? No? Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> All right, we'll see you soon. Bye.